let's talk about working with namespaces. Namespaces are very important. Namespaces that we use from other people or from Microsoft or namespaces that we create ourselves. I'm working within Primal Code, which is a great editor from Sapien Technologies. You can check them out on the web, sapien.com, and you can get the download the trial if you want to work with Primal Code, which allows you to work with C Sharp very, very nicely. Also, ActionScript Code if you're doing Flash and things like that. It's a nice editor. I like to use it. I'll use it within the training, but I'll also use the command line compiler and Visual Studio.net 2003. Anyway, this is just the getting started in the simple namespace. If we open that file, simple namespace folder in your project folder, and it's just called get cgetstarted.cs, just a simple CS file, C sharp file, and I'm just going to talk about namespaces. Now, you're always using the system namespace. That's the main namespace that you're going to normally see up top there that you're going to want to put in into your namespaces. Namespaces are collections of classes, and classes are just how we create objects within our object-oriented languages. A class can represent anything. A class can be a class of hardware products, a class of animals, a class of cars. It describes the universe that we are going to be working with, and it narrows down what the methods and properties are that we're going to be working with to manipulate that class or to work with the class. And it's very common to have multiple classes within a namespace. There are things called interfaces, which we'll get into later as well. These are special ways to handle working within an object-oriented world as well. Normally you have your main, no, don't worry about the public static just yet, but the main is your entry point into a program. This is a console application. And we just have some code here that we place here. We'll talk about the console right line later. This is a console application. And then I just put a second class in there. No big deal. Classes have methods and properties and ways to actually deal with working within the programming world. And you see we nest everything with our brackets as we move into our code. Very nice and very neat. But let's say, for example, like I said, you're using system namespace. You just created our namespace here. This is something that you could share with others as well. But this is the namespace that you're working with. And normally, you're going to try to fit that within a file. Within your C Sharp file, you can also just specify classes within your C Sharp file to extend namespaces as well across files. Let's see. We're going to just take a look at the command line here. And we'll be working with the command line compiler in other examples. You just want to get to the start menu and hit run CMD to bring up a command line. And then we just navigate to our folder here. And if we just do a dir directory, we see that we have our C get started file. I'm just going to compile that. And then I'm going to run it. I have this already using the up arrows and down arrows to find what I'm looking for. Then I just run the application. Just some output text here. We'll explain this later, but this is just giving you some information about this object. And if we wanted to say, for example, add a message box to this, we'd have to use another namespace. So let's just put a message box code in here at the end. Notice that there was no help there. There was no code hinting there. And we'll just call it test. And then we will save this file. Then we'll recompile the file. Whoa, we have an error here. This namespace name, message box, couldn't be found. Well, it's, it's saying that we're missing something. So we're missing a directive, a using directive. So we want to use a different namespace using system dot, and it, it's going to help us there. We start to type in Windows, and then we can see that that's what we would have here. And then we type in dot, and then we have forms. This is going to be the way that we're going to work with Windows. And this is what you normally need, even with just a message box. And if we were actually to cut this out, the message box, and type it in now, you see that that code hinting is in place. And then it gives you all types of help different ways you can work with the message box. 
and we'll just save it and now we will compile it missing a semicolon you'll see this happen to me once or twice it definitely happens a lot you need your semicolons there in order to run this application correctly to be able to compile always need your semicolons and there we go it compiles nicely that time and now when we run this we'll clear this first but when we run there we go message box pops up quick and easy but you need that reference to that namespace there in order for this to work so you can see that working with namespaces is easy using the using function we'll do this quite a lot quite often most videos and then we created our own namespace and that's going to contain our get started class which is the entry point to our main function there the main entry point to our console application and then you can add as many classes as you want we'll go into all the object oriented details in great detail as we move through the training